Hey guys, Extrasify here. Welcome back to another gold video. Today I'll be counting down the top 10 ways that people are making millions of gold in Dragonflight to prepare for the War Within. Now, just stick around and let's get into the list. And at number 10 we have Farming the Siege of Orgamar. Now you can farm this on any difficulty, but I prefer doing it on Mythic. And the battle pets that we are after, which is the main thing we are going after in this farm, are the Droplet of Yasharaj, the Black Fuse Bombling, the Gooey Shaling, and Kovok. Now, Wowhead has each of these at about a 5% drop chance, so that is why these pets are expensive. And compared to a lot of battle pets that you can farm for, these sell rather quick, so I highly recommend you guys give this a try. It doesn't take more than about a half hour or so to farm the Siege of Orgamar, and personally I like I like running it, so definitely a good payout if you get any of those pets, and that's why it is only number 10 due to the low drop chance. And coming in at number 9, we are going to be farming Mana Tombs. Now, doing this on Heroic only is the best way of making gold, because we are going after the Ethereum Prison Keys, as well as mining for Corium, and there's the chance of Great Transmog or Epic World Drop Patterns from the Burning Crusade. Now, to be eligible to loot these Ethereum Prison Keys, you basically need Revered with the Consortium Faction, and then fly on up to Netherstorm and do a quick quest or two. Basically, you have to free this guy. And upon completing that quest, you'll be able to then go into the Mana Tombs. And when you kill Trash Mobs, you will have a chance to loot the Ethereum Prison Keys. Now, that's going to be a good consistent gold income for you. Because they do sell uh, region-wide, same as the materials do. And it is just overall a nice extra amount of income while you're also farming for Corium, Adamantite Ore, and the rare world drop patterns. That's why this is number 9. And coming in at number 8, we have the Sealed Tome of Lost Legion. Now, this is a pretty well-known one, um, but basically you need to have a Warlock. This is a Warlock-only farm. And head over to the Isle of Thunder in Pandaria. Basically, you'll just want to run around and kill the rare spawns. Now, all the rare spawns on the map have about a 2% drop chance of this item. Basically, it starts a quest for warlocks only. That's why it only drops for warlocks. And it's a quick little quest chain, and upon completion, your uh, f like flames can basically become green. Um, and a lot of people think that's cool so they will buy it. Now this item goes for about 20k or 30k, depends on your realm. Could be more, could be less of course, and it's a quick seller. It honestly sells pretty well on most realms. It's very popular. Now even if you don't have a warlock, you can simply make a class trial, log on every couple hours or so, um, and as well as that, another quick tip would be to enter war mode. It might help with competition if there are a lot of people farming it or camping it on your server. So, it's pretty solid, but it's not the most expensive. That's why it's only number 8. Now coming in at number 7 is crafted mounts. Now I am personally not a huge fan of crafted mounts, only because on my realm, which is a super full pop realm, it's hardly profitable. Uh, besides, like, the Mechaneer's Chopper, I can make a few thousand off of that. But essentially, you'll be crafting things like the Mechaneer's Chopper, the Pandaren uh, Panthers, and also things like the Flying Carpet with Tailoring, the Flying Machine with Engineering. Those sell really well, by the way, and I believe that they are really slept on is the Flying Machine and the Flying Machine Extreme, as well as the Flying Carpet. So make sure to check your realms for those. So yeah, not too much to talk about with this one, um, but just check your realms before you craft. Also another one that is really good is the Vial of the Sands, but it requires quite a bit of vendor materials that are expensive. So just be sure to check your realms for the materials before considering this now coming in at number 6 we have the Nether Dragon Scale Farms. 
This is an amazing farm. I absolutely love it. In order to do it, just coming out here to Nether Storm, make sure you have Outland Skinning, as this is the only way you can get these. If you don't have it, just go to Shatrath and speak to the Skinning Trainer. Then come on over to Nether Storm and fly around and just skin all of these dragons that are flying around here. You will get absolutely a ton of these. These are used for a bunch of Outland rare um, transmogs and things like that. And along with it being a material, it will sell super quick on the region-wide auction house. And since not a lot of people farm this one, it's got quite a good value. Right now, it's about 70 to 75 gold on my realm, and you literally get so many of these an hour. It's absolutely amazing. So highly recommend this farm. And along with the Nether Dragonwing farm, we are also going to be highlighting the Cobra Scales farm. Now this is a really good material because it's used in a lot of popular transmogs, such as the Stylin hats that sell absolutely crazy because they look really cool, along with a bunch of other transmogs. And once again, it's just very quick sales since it is a region-wide price. And actually, the Cobra Scales, this is why it beat out the Nether Dragonwing Scales spot on the list, is because prices have been between 150 and 200 gold or more for each of them. Now, there aren't as many mobs, but basically you'll just be flying around this area, killing the serpents here, as you can see, and skinning them. And it's super easy, and it's got really good gold per hour. Highly recommend this spot for you guys to give it a try. Now coming in at number four, we have the Sunwell Plateau Raid Farm. Now, if you guys have seen my channel much, you know how much I love farming Sunwell. There are a ton of great patterns and plans that are unique to Sunwell. Only way to get them is to kill mobs in Sunwell. Um, so a lot of things we're after are the schematics for the engineering goggles they are worth a ton especially with the new achievements that came in in dragonflight one of the recent patches where they have added cosmetic goggles to people that craft all of the old world goggles including a bunch of these that drop in sunwell so that is why these patterns are selling like hotcakes and selling for a rather expensive price so as you can see on my screen you just run around, kill the first few areas, do not kill Caligos or any of the bosses since this is obviously a raid, you don't want to get locked out. But it's super easy, and I also recently posted a 50 runs results video on my channel, uh, farming Sunwell 50 times. So if you want to see all the crate loot that I got, and it was pretty great, be sure to check out my channel. And that's why I love this farm. It is number four. Now coming in at number three, we have the Battered Hill Farm. Now, a lot of people know about this farm, but it is one of my favorites. Now, you need to farm this on Heroic only. We are farming the Pit of Saron. You can only loot the Battered Hill on Heroic difficulty. It will never drop on Normal. So what this means is that you should not kill any of the bosses in this dungeon or else you will be locked to the instance and not able to reset it for the rest of the day until the daily reset. Now, you should definitely farm this on a tailoring character, not only for the uh, cloth scavenging that will increase the amount of frostweave cloth so that you make more gold, but only tailors can learn or not learn, but they can loot a bunch of the Northrend t uh, shirt patterns that drop from this dungeon. Now you have a lot of things like the Stylin shirts, you have uh, lumbering lumberjack shirts patterns that can drop from this dungeon that are worth like 20 to 50k gold each. There's a ton of patterns, there's probably like almost a dozen patterns that can drop for only tailors. So that really increases the amount of gold you can earn from here. Not much as far as transmog goes, but there are some world drop epics that can increase the gold even if you don't receive a battered hilt. Coming in at number two, we have mining and herbalism routes. Now there are a number of great routes as far as 
finding which ones are the best. My personal top three include Oldham Farming, which is the Whiptail, Pyrite Ore, Elementium Ore, and Volatile Life Farming. And by the way, I'll throw up the routes on the screen here. So we have the Oldham Farm. Another one of my favorites is the Vashir Farm. Now that's farming for things like the Ashara's Veil, Obsidian Ore, and Storm Vine. And then coming in at my personal number one farm will be the Winter Spring Farm, or Winter Grasp, excuse me, Winter Grasp Farm. Uh, farming for things like Serenite Ore, Titanium Ore, and all of the herbs that come along with that. Uh, personally, the Winter Grasp Farm is my favorite because the Titanium Ore sells so well and at such a good price. But there are also a ton of other good routes such as the Terracar Forest, and I made a video about that recently. And, you know, just check prices often. Uh, there are tons of good ones, even mining for things like uh, Monolite Ore and Storm Silver Ore in, like, Colteras is very good still. Um, but, yeah, uh, as simple as it sounds, gathering has made me a lot of gold, and it can easily make you a lot of gold. That is why it is number two. Now, coming in at number one, we have Transmog. Now, if you've been watching any of my videos lately, this should not surprise you. This is absolutely my favorite way of making gold in WoW, and it seems to be what a ton of other people are doing in WoW as well. Now, I play on a full pop server, so you might think that the auction house would be oversaturated with transmog, but as you guys hopefully have seen in my recent weekly mailbox cleanout video, we made hundreds of thousands of gold only from transmog. It was really insane. Um, farming transmog, crafted transmog, all of it. I absolutely love it and a lot of other people have made millions. It has actually been the majority of me hitting gold cap a couple different times throughout the expansion since Legion. I've hit gold cap two different times and actually three and um, yeah uh, transmog is amazing. I love the RNG of it. All of the, the rare, expensive gear that one can go after in all the different kind of dungeons. Um, if you're not feeling like farming one dungeon, you can easily just go farm another one and see amazing results. So, with that being said, I can personally vouch that Transmog is my number one gold making. And I know some people don't like Transmog or it doesn't work on their server, but... I mean, just give it a try. Um, hopefully you have some great results. And that's why this is number one on this list. Now, of course, making this list is my opinion, and it's what I see people most frequently saying that they do to make a lot of gold in Dragonflight. Obviously, this is a bit subjective, and I hope you guys will understand my point of view as for the ranking of this list. If you think I missed anything or left anything out, or if you agree with what I said on this list, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Be sure to check my other videos out and let me know if you have any video recommendations. And until next time, good luck with your auction house sales, and I shall see you in the next gold making video. Have a great day. Bye bye.